Once again, greetings from Dallas, Texas. Uh, Mom and I and our family members are still fine and well. We're doing uh, very good as far as health is concerned, uh, waiting on the Lord. Uh, I did receive an email from John Hernan uh, asking special prayer for his mom, uh, his brother and his brother's wife and daughter who all tested positive to COVID. Uh, she's at home. There's no, uh, I think, he said in his uh, email that she is number 100 in the waiting list for PGH. All the hospitals there in Las Pinas are filled to capacity. So please join me and others uh, in prayer concerning, especially his mom, uh, uh, who's up in age, uh, that the Lord would touch and restore her health. Also, of course, for his brother and family. Also, he's asking prayer for Liberty, who's pregnant and due to deliver in September. And certainly that the Lord will watch over her and keep her safe as well. Uh, this week, I had the, the opportunity to witness to a, uh, a man concerning uh, his salvation. Got to talk to him a little bit and uh, found out, I asked him his religious preference. He said he was raised Mormon. And uh, he said he ended up marrying a, uh, a Catholic girl. Uh, he said that the Mormon doctrine did not stick. And he said he wasn't crazy also about the uh, Catholic Church because his wife, I believe, was divorced. And so they wouldn't allow him to get married in the church. I, uh, I found, though, that uh, he, he continued on and said that he was... Uh, playing racquetball with a, uh, a guy that he found out later who was a pastor of a Christian fellowship. And I think he's visited their church several times. Uh, I asked him if he's born again. He said no. And anyway, about that time, I uh, had to leave. And so I didn't get to go any further with the conversation. But the reason why I mention him is because I find that many people... Uh, seek or go or attend a church many times or are willing to attend a church many times as long as that church does not interfere with their preconceived ideas of God and, and uh, of life. Uh, and at the same time, they are more apt to attend a, uh, a religion of preference uh, especially if that religion does not interfere with their lifestyle. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many of these so-called churches are uh, inviting people and saying, come as you are and, and join us. And it's almost like you can stay as you are as well. We're just happy to have you come and, and hopefully we can all have a, a great time together. And uh, we know the, the Word of God uh, certainly is different than come as you are and stay as you are. We do know that God's desire and God's will, according to His Word, is that uh, all men will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so we're going to be talking today about uh, how do we know what's true. And we're also going to be talking about in the first half of the message about uh, truth decay. Not tooth decay, but truth decay, because there is a great decay uh, concerning truth in the world that we live, and it continues to decay more and more each and every day. But before we get into the message, let's look to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless our time together. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we do come to you, and I do thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity that we have to study your word. I do thank you, dear God, for those that are, are listening. I do pray, Lord, for anyone that's listening this morning concerning truth decay, that you would uh, open up their understanding and open up their heart, Lord, to the truth, uh, truth according to your word. Uh, I do pray, dear God, that you'll uh, be with uh, John Hernan's mom in a very special way, that you'll touch and restore her health, be with his brother and family, that you continue to uh, strengthen them, Lord, and help them also to be able to overcome the COVID-19, pray for liberty uh, during this time of pregnancy, that you place a hedge about her and keep her safe. And Lord, just help us, those that are still uh, healthy, dear Lord, uh, help us to be mindful and help us, Lord, to be wise in, in following the rules and regulations, the restrictions, the distancing and the wearing the face mask, dear Lord. Help us just to 
and follow those guidelines. And we do pray that you will, as always, be with the scientists, be with the doctors to uh, be able to come to a, uh, uh, a the ability, Lord, to discover a vaccine for the COVID-19 that this can be completely eradicated, that things would get back to normal. We thank you, Lord, again, for this time you've given. Help us, Lord, to not only be hearers, but doers of what we hear. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, as I mentioned, the first part is going to be six signs of truth decay. And then the second half will be five ways that we can know the truth. So let's begin with six signs of truth decay. The first one is immaturity, immaturity. Uh, it's okay for kids to act like kids because they're kids. But as they grow up and as they get older, certainly uh, if they continue to act like kids, well, then that's not proper. That's not right. And they are uh, not being a good testimony for anyone, especially, you know, the Lord or their parents. Paul states in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I'm sure that, you know, every parent desires for their child to grow up and become mature and become responsible uh, with the life that they're living, to be a good example, to uh, be a good testimony to the parents. This is also necessary in the spiritual realm. We look over into Ephesians 4, Apostle Paul writing, he says that she henceforth to be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And certainly the, the enemy, Satan, and uh, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, and he would love to continue to deceive individuals uh, to not believe the Word of God, not to be open to the Word of God, and to believe uh, falsehood or lies. And certainly that's where Satan's power is, is in lies. And so we need to grow up not only physically, but we need to grow up also spiritually. And the Bible talks about when we first get saved, we're babes in Christ, desiring the sincere milk of the Word. But later on, as we grow up, we are not to... Uh, be spoon-fed or fed from a bottle, but we are to desire the meat of the Word, get into the Word, grow and, and uh, mature in our knowledge of the Lord. And so whether it's talking about the physical realm or the spiritual realm, it's the same thing. We are to uh, not to stay uh, babies. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he rebuked actually the church of Corinth. He says, I couldn't come to you as unto spiritual, but as unto cardinal, as unto babes in Christ. Why? They, haven't, they hadn't grown and they were still acting just like babies. So we need to grow up. We need to get into the word of God, into the meat of the word of God and understand what truth is. And then we are to walk in that truth because there certainly is a truth decay in the days that we are living Immaturity is one of them. Immorality is a also the, the second mark that we're going to look at as far as truth decay. Immorality, when we hear that term, immorality, I think our mind immediately goes to sexual immorality. And that's only one part, uh, one kind of immorality. Uh, actually, the word immorality means no morals. Not they have any morals at all, okay? Uh, a verse in the Old Testament that I would like for you to turn or at least listen to is Judges 21 25. A very familiar verse. Uh, I use this verse uh, many times when I'm in churches talking about the, uh, the driving in the Philippines. And this is the verse. Uh, in those days, there was, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. And uh, sad to say, this is. This is common for our flesh to do whatever it wants to do, whatever it desires to do, especially if there's no one there uh, to penalize us. And uh, the Bible says when there was no king to rule, certainly everyone's going to do what's right in their own eyes, doing whatever they want to do. Why? Because there's no king to lead them. There's no punishment. 
There's no consequence. Here is how truth decay works. When an individual, whether it's a, especially I would say, especially a, a child of God, maybe a, a new convert, whatever, uh, an immature Christian, they do something wrong, maybe they miss church on, on Sunday. Now, this is during normal times, not during the COVID when we're uh, restricted from assembling together. But they miss church on a uh, maybe a Wednesday night or maybe a Sunday night. They're normally there and there's conviction there and they know it's wrong. But as time goes on, if they do it a second time and a third time or maybe a fourth time, the conviction is there, but it's not as strong as it was the first time. And what happens is, is they become weaker spiritually because faith comes up by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Again, feasting upon the Word of God is where we get our strength, our spiritual strength. And so even though they know it is wrong, as they continue to be absent and continue to miss the nourishment that they, certainly if they're not going to church, they're probably not having any daily devotions as well. And so what happens is, is they start uh, telling themselves and making, uh, rationalizing their sin. Because now that the still, if for a child of God, having the indwelling Holy Spirit of God, there's still going to be the conv conviction there, but it's going to continue to get weaker and weaker and weaker as they be can become weaker and weaker and weaker spiritually. And they are going to rationalize, well, you know, uh, I really have to be... Uh, here at this place or there at that place and I really can't go to church on Sunday night anymore and this is a, certainly a uh, a major cause of truth decay because now they're not hearing the truth how are they going to believe the truth how are they going to spread the truth if they're not listening to it themselves a third area or sign of uh, truth decay is unreality and what we mean by that is uh, when people stop believing the truth. Uh, when they stop believing the truth, they will start believing anything. And the term that we would use there is a person who doesn't know the truth is a person who is gullible. Uh, you can tell a person who's gullible almost anything and they'll believe it. Why? Because they don't know the truth about what you're talking about. Well, this is the same in the area of uh, spirituality. If a person doesn't know the Word of God, and that's why they can be led astray uh, by any uh, wind of doctrine, the Apostle Paul says, that comes along, even though it may be false doctrine, if they don't know true doctrine, they're not going to know that the false doctrine is in fact false. And so they're going to believe anything. There are some people that have more faith in a crystal ball than they do the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many people who believe in tarot cards or they believe in uh, every day they're looking at their horoscope to see how that's going to work in their lives. They have more faith in that than they do the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul commended the church at Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians 1.9, where he said, Ye turn to God from idols to serve the true and living God. Paul warned over and over again. He says, be not deceived. How do you know that there's truth decay in your life? Well, you can tell if there's truth decay in your life by not living the life of truth, by not walking in truth, by pretending that you're something that you're not. You're fi you find yourself acting and pretending to be something when you're really not what you're pretending to be. Uh, that's when you realize that, wow, I'm not living the truth. And uh, illegality is a another sign of truth decay. When there's no standard of right or wrong, anything can be considered legal. Uh, I think this is very similar to uh, when there was no king in the land. If there's nobody there to say what it is, well, then we'll just, you know. Uh, but this, this particular area of illegality is uh, categorizing our life and it's uh, you've heard the term little white lies people that use that terminology little white lies you know what they're saying well i may have told some little white lies 
but really they don't amount to anything. So they're they're categorizing sin and saying there's big sin and small sin, and in this little white lie, I'm saying it's really not it's really not hurting anyone, and it's just a little white lie. The truth of the matter is, irregardless of how they paint that lie, it's still a lie. It's not the truth, and uh, no matter what they say about it, or ma no matter what they think about it, again, it's contrary to the Word of God. It's contrary to God Himself. Okay. Uh, so they start categorizing and, uh, well, it's not really any big thing. Well, to God it's big. Uh, a little sin of disobedience in the, the Garden of Eden ca caused the downfall of man. We would say that's not, that's not a big sin today, but it was a big sin to God then. And it's a big sin to God today. Sin is sin. And one insignificant sin to us would be a sin big enough to keep a person out of heaven, okay? And so that sin needs to be forgiven. That sin needs to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ or that person will not go to heaven, no matter how good they think they may be. We find in 1 Corinthians 5, 6, Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? It doesn't take a lot of leaven to leaven the whole lump, just a little bit, and it will permeate the whole thing, the whole lump. The Bible also mentions in Deuteronomy, uh, in Numbers 32, 23, be sure your sin will find you out. Little white lies, God sees you saying or, or telling those lies. And it's sin. And it's against God and it's against the truth. So we categorize our lives and we say, well, it's not really, you know, it's not really that bad. Or God, you know, God's a God of love and he doesn't really think, where are you getting this from? You're not getting it from the word of God. A person that will live a life of little white lies is a person that is lacking integrity. And certainly God looks upon the heart and God sees each and every time that we fail to tell the truth and do the truth and walk in truth. Our entire lives are integrated, not categorized. Integrity is what you see is what you get. It's someone who's authentic. Someone is, when you see me, this is who I am. Uh, you don't need to wonder what I'm thinking because I'm going to let you know because I'm concerned about you. I love you in the Lord and I want the best for your life. Idolatry is a sign of truth decay. We idolize the wrong thing, especially in the day that we live. We idolize wealth. We idolize uh, success. We idolize outward appearance. We idolize uh, athletic ability. We idolize uh, intelligence, popularity, uh, things, cars, uh, homes, uh, you know, things that can be purchased. Uh, these things may not be wrong in and of themselves, but they do not deserve worship. And how often do things receive worship instead of the Lord? Uh, they don't deserve, certainly number one of our life, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that deserves first place in all of our lives. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Romans one twenty five mentions, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And this is exactly what's taking place today in this world we live with this tr truth decay. Injustice is a sign of truth decay. Isaiah 59, 14. And judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Well, when there's no standard of right and wrong, no truth and no falsehood, you're going to get away with anything. Everything falls back to the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Well, whoever has the gold makes the rules. How many rich people have, uh, they were, were guilty, but they bought their way out of sentence, sentence, getting sentenced uh, maybe to death, maybe a life in, uh, in prison, but they worked with people they knew. They were people of power because of their wealth, because of their influence, and worked behind the scenes, and their sentence was uh, decreased, or maybe it was even dropped. And so injustice certainly is a sign of truth decay. Uh, we have to reverse the tide. We have to change the way the world is going. That's one of the main reasons why God did not take us home when he saved us. 
We need to be people of truth. We need to be, uh, the Bible says we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of this world. And so we need to be making a difference because God has made a difference in our life. And we're to take that same difference that God made in our life and share it with the world that does not know the truth. Five ways to discover truth. Uh, we know what's true simply through creation, according to the Word of God. How can we know that God is true or what is true? The Bible says through looking at God's creation and understanding what God has created. He's created all things according to the Word of God. We learn about God. Uh, we learn about truth by looking at God's creation. Romans 1.20 for the invisible things of him, talking about God, for the invisible things of God from the, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Listen, everyone is without excuse. People say, uh, how about those in the darkest Africa where there are no churches? Well, that's one of the reasons why God calls missionaries to go there that they might hear the truth as well. But they can look at creation. They know there's a higher power. And you find, you find wherever you go, people are worshiping something. And they can look at creation, though. According to the Word of God, uh, it, what you know Paul is saying is that people will look at creation. If they will seek the creator of creation, certainly that is God. And if they seek him, I believe with all my heart, that God is going to take a, take an individual, going to save an individual, going to send that individual to that person wherever they're at in the world <clears throat> to help them find the truth and help them to find the God of creation. And so we are uh, we we can tell people and we can help people uh, by explaining this to them that God created all things. Without Him, nothing was created. Uh, certainly the world, we talk about truth decay, they teach evolution and saying, you know, that let's remove God out of the picture. We don't need a God to know who we are and where we came from. That is so contrary. That's from the devil. That, that certainly is not from God. God is all powerful. God is omnipotent. God, God is sovereign. Uh, mankind can uh, just observe the power of God in the earthquakes, in the uh, storms that, that come, the hurricanes and so on, tsunamis and all of the other things, the volcanoes. Uh, God is a God that created all of this and God is a God that is all powerful. God is an organized God. He still keeps all of the, uh, everything in its orbit where it belongs. If it wasn't for God, if God just stopped for a few seconds, everything would start crashing into each other. We would not be around very long. And so we find that we look at God's creation, we look at God who is sovereign, and we need to share that truth with the lost and dying world. We can also know the truth by uh, through the conscience that God has given to all of us. God has given us a conscience. Romans 2, verses 14 and 15. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law or a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. This is talking about the conscience. Their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. There are some things that God has hardwired in us uh, that help us to, to know, you know, the difference between right and wrong. Uh, a, a young child, they know when they're doing wrong. Uh, they don't have to have the Ten Commandments up on the wall. <clears throat> they know their conscience will reveal to them when they are doing something wrong. Of course, when a person gets saved, not only do we have a conscience, but now we have the indwelling Holy Spirit that leads and guides us into all truth, that helps us and convicts us each and every time we sin. And so, but before we get saved, we have a conscience that God has given to us to help us to know what is right and wrong. You can have several children in a room or you can have something take place in a home, something gets broken and you can bring all the children out and you can ask them, did you break this? Did you break this? Who broke this? And you can look 
at the expressions on their face and you're going to be uh, it's going to be very easy to distinguish by the look on the face of the guilty child who broke that whereas the other children are just going to be standing there I didn't do it but the, the guilty child is going to uh, squeal on themselves by the the fear that they have in their face or on their face as saying you know their conscience is telling uh, them you did this why are you lying why are you saying you didn't do it so God has given us that conscience to help us as well to know the truth between right and wrong number three we can also know what is true through consideration truth is certainly attainable you can test it you can prove it you can observe it if I uh, if I take a, a pencil and drop this pencil it's going to drop if I let go of this pencil there it goes it goes down the pencil is not going to float up it shows the truth of gravity and so the uh, the reason why so many people in this world uh, don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is because they've never considered the Lord Jesus Christ. They've never taken time to consider the truth of the Word of God. They've never taken time to read the Bible. Uh, I've been studying the Bible now. I, I I look back to the time I got saved and uh, got involved in in church immediately, and it's been it's been already more than 45 years since I got saved and came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And what I have found out from studying the Word of God, the more I study the Word of God, the stronger my faith becomes. Uh, the more I study the Word of God, the, the truer uh, the things that I maybe didn't know about God before or just thought about God before, the truer they became, the more real, more realistic they became in my heart and life. The Bible says over in Proverbs 14, 15, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his goings. The, uh, the simple believeth every word. And, and again, uh, I would have to say this is talking about the person who's gullible, the person who doesn't have wisdom, the person who does not have prudence and understanding. Uh, I would rather have someone ask me questions somebody that i'm witnessing to uh, that shows an interest in the truth in the lord in getting their life right i would rather for them to ask me questions than a person that would say okay what do i need to do just tell me uh, unless unless other individuals have gone before me other other individuals have already planted the seed other individuals have already shared the the gospel message with them now they are ripe for the picking. That's a different story. But I'm talking about just talking to someone, uh, someone that is very easy to convince because they don't know any better. Uh, someone that will say, okay, just tell me what to do. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I, I think that's a good idea. Uh, if I can get to heaven that way, then, you know, what words do I need to say? Uh, I have actually not shared uh, the gospel message with very few uh, individuals that were of that mindset that were thinking well if I if I can get what you're telling me if I can have eternal life and and have all these things that God has promised me yeah I'm willing to it's, it's kind of like I'm willing to take a chance I'm willing to say say a prayer and see if it happens well there's no faith in that what they're doing is more or less gambling and adding the Lord Jesus Christ all to onto all of the other beliefs that they already have and thinking hey why not well one more one more religion to add to it my chances are better to get into heaven instead of saying this is the truth this is the one well i need this i'm willing to repent i'm willing to do whatever necessary uh, to give my life to the lord that i can have eternal life a big difference in that mindset and the other mindset of okay it sounds like a great deal i'm i'm, I'm in I'm full in. What do I need to do? Just tell me what I need to pray. The words I need to say. No, that's not salvation. That's a fire escape out of hell and in a stairway to heaven. Uh, easy believism. And so we need to understand the difference. 
when someone is willing to commit their life and mean business for the Lord, yes, we need to share and give them what they need to hear. But someone that is not sincere, someone that's just wanting to add, certainly that's not something I believe that uh, we should do and give them a false assurance of faith. You can know the truth through communication, through what God tells us and the direction he gives us in the Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. The Bible says, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, if I discover truth from the Bible, how do I know the Bible's true? Well, <laughs> uh, that's going to take faith as well. But the main reason that I know the Bible's true is because of the change that it made in my life. I mean, how can anybody argue uh, about that? And to me, that's the greatest testimony uh, for anyone to say, I heard you join this other religion, this Baptist religion, whatever it is. Uh, What's the greatest testimony to those individuals, to those relatives? It's a changed life. Therefore, if any man's being Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, things, all things have become new. The greatest testimony right there, that what this individual has found is the truth, and this truth has changed their life for the better, not for the worse. Uh, Paul wrote to the uh, wrote to uh, individuals that were thieves. He said, those that st stole, steal no more. Now you go out and you get a job. Work with your hands. Your life is different. Start giving. Before you were taking, now start giving. Be a blessing to others. Be a blessing to the church. Be a blessing to the ministry. So on and so forth. And so the changed life. Communicating. Uh, the uh, the evidence. There's There's internal evidence there's external evidence as well the external evidence is the reality of history the, the historical evidence the cities are there the places are there that the bible talks about uh, there's also internal evidence of the bible itself eyewitness accounts uh, moses was there at the uh, the parting of the red sea joshua was there when jericho fell uh, the disciples uh, were there, eyewitnesses, uh, the apostles uh, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the fact that the Word of God uh, tells one story consistently, uh, written over a period of 1,500 years by 40 different uh, authors. And so there's no doubt it's the Word of God. Uh, Jesus said, Father, sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. The Word of God is true. Uh, God is true and every man a liar. God's claiming that his word is true. We need to believe that his word is true. You believe it and you will see and you will know it's true because of the change it will make in your life. And so we, the, the, highest, the highest way we can know the truth is, of course, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God came to earth in human form. Uh, to personify truth. Of course, the verse uh, 14, 6, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus did not say a religion is the way. Jesus did not say a race is the way. Jesus did not say a ritual is the way. It's through a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. So what do I do with the truth once I discovered it? Well, what should I do with the truth once I discover it? Well, number one, four things. The first thing you need to do, especially if you're not saved, is believe it. It is the truth and you need to believe it. It will set you free from the penalty and the power of sin. John 8, 32, you should know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Uh, I can remember the night back in 1974, Tuesday night in June, when I prayed the sinner's prayer. Wow, I was set free. I was born again. I was a changed man, changed young man at that time. But praise the Lord, I've never regretted that. I've never forgotten it. I can look back and I can... It's just like it was yesterday. It's always fresh in my mind, the change that God made. 
Not doubting my salvation, not doubting God's promise, not doubting God's word, but believing it with my whole heart and the change that he made in my life. Well, if you believe it, then you need to obey it. You can't say you believe something if you don't follow it, if it's not a part of your life. First Peter one twenty two, seeing you have purified your hearts in obeying the truth. If a person says, I believe the word of God, and I've had people tell me when I've witnessed to them, I believe in God, I believe what you're saying is true, but I'm just not ready to get saved. You know what they're telling me? They're lying to me. They don't believe what I'm telling them. If they truly believe what I'm telling them, that without Christ, you're going to die and go to hell. But with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're on your way to heaven. If they truly believe that, guess what they'd be doing? They, they couldn't pray fast enough. They couldn't get saved quick enough if they really believed it. They're saying they believed it, but they're not. They don't believe it. And of course, if they don't believe it, they're not going to accept it. They're not going to obey it. And then again, if a person truly believes it and a person does obey it, guess what? A person is going to stand for it. 2 Corinthians 13 8, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. We need to uphold the truth. We need to share the truth. We need to give away the truth. We have freely received. We are to freely give. We are to spread it. 1 Timothy 2 4, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me. We're to go in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That is our responsibility as believers. If it wasn't, the Lord would have taken us home when he saved us. If he was done with us then, he wasn't done with us. That was the beginning. That was the foundation of our salvation. That was the foundation of our spiritual life. He's given us marching orders to witness to all those that we come in contact with. Because we don't know. Are they saved? Are they lost? I've had a few people ask me if I, if I was saved. I've never, I've never uh, gotten mad over that. I've never thought, you know, why are you asking me that? I'm glad to tell you my testimony. I love sharing my testimony of salvation with someone who's lost, with someone who's saved. doesn't make any difference. To God be the glory, great things he had done. He's the one that saved me. I didn't save myself. So in this day of truth decay, are you taking what you know? Are you sharing what you know? Are you hearing the words that are being spoken right now? If you believe them, it will change your life because you will take that step of faith. You will take that step of obedience. You'll call upon the name of the Lord and be changed in a moment in twinkling of an eye, just like when we're going to be raptured out. But you'll be saved just that quick to the power of God, to the shed blood of, his, of the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, who came for that purpose to die for your sin and for mine. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your word. I thank you, dear God, for this time. I do pray, continue to pray, Lord, for those who are uh, have contact, contracted the, the virus, dear Lord, that you will uh, intervene and restore their health. I pray, Lord, that you'll keep us that are still healthy that same way, Lord. Give us wisdom. Uh, help us, Lord, to uh, practice all of the uh, guidelines, Lord, and the, the washing of hands and and all of the things, Lord, that we need to do. Uh, so important to have that good testimony and good health as well. And I just pray that you'll bless those that are hearers at this time and that you'll bless your word as it goes forth, that it might truly change lives according to your will and your time. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, love you. And uh, we're still waiting for our passports. Uh, we're still waiting for windows uh, in all different areas to open up, but we're still praying for our soon return, Lord willing. We'll see you next week. Bye.